Hey there, amazing artists. Today, we are going to be drawing um, a Jacques Cousteau-inspired drawing. We're going to be using some contour lines. We're drawing the outside edges of objects. We're going to be drawing the contour line drawing of a old-fashioned sea diving scuba suit. And then, oh, we're gonna use our color knowledge to add some real spice and zest to it. But we have to do our drawing first. So I'm gonna look at my paper and you can either have your paper going vertically, you can have it going horizontally, totally up to you. I'm gonna go vertical and I am going to be thinking about I want to have my scuba diver take up most of the space of my paper. So I am thinking, all right, head, body, feet and legs, that type of a thing. So head up here, feet down here, thinking about it. If I draw the head this big, that's probably gonna be too big, right? Yeah, so if I wanna fit the whole body on it, I have to think and plan ahead. So I'm going to start up here and I am going to start with my scuba diver. This is an old fashioned scuba suit and old fashioned scuba suits. They always had a center circle glass plate for the divers to look through. And then around the outside edge was another circle. This was bolted onto the helmet, which is actually what we're going to draw next. So scuba divers used to wear these huge helmets that fit over their entire head. And then they also had all sorts of uh, details, all sorts of attachments on the sides. So there's the beginning of my scuba diver helmet. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is draw the bottom where the helmet meets the rest of the suit. It's a slight curve. And then I can add some shoulders. Now the cool thing about these suits that makes it easy to draw is that they were really big and bulky. Okay, so if you draw a big bulky scuba suit, yeah, you're doing just fine. All right, so those are my shoulders. I'll finish drawing the rest of the arm in a second, but what I wanna do right now is think about the body, okay? So I'm thinking about the body. I'm thinking about how there's like an armpit, you know, we all have armpits. So that's usually a detail, part of the contour. So see how I'm, I'm kind of visualizing it with my hand and my eyes. I'm looking, I'm thinking, looking and thinking. And I think I'm gonna do a line right here and then a line right here. And you'll see that those are defining the body. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna draw those a little darker. Okay. And then I'm gonna think, where's my waist going to be? So that's about the chest, here's the belly. Let's make the waist right here. It might be a little bit long in the torso that's okay. The torso is this part of your body. It involves the chest and the belly. That's the torso. All right, so I know that the other side of my arm uh, of the diver suit is gonna be right here. And I'm gonna draw this line going down too. So scuba divers, they also, um, these old scuba suits were really big and bulky. So they were a lot like uh, a little kid wearing lots of layers of winter clothes. Their arms are like sticking out by their sides and like, I can't move my arms. And that's okay, because it was big and bulky and keeping them safe. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish. I'm gonna make the sleeve go to the waist, right? And then I'm gonna do a little line over. And then I'm gonna bring the rest of the sleeve of the scuba suit down. Boom, check that out. 
See how they're all kind of on the same level? A nice little curve. Nice little curve going on there. That's okay. So let's go ahead and finish this up. I'm going to add another layer. That'll be like the belt of the scuba suit. I'm going to add some legs. Legs. This is just the outside edge, right? And now this is not going to be 100% realistic. There's a little abstraction to this. It's a little cartoony. I'm going to go ahead and add some legs. Look at that with a nice big curve going up and down. Mm -hmm. Let's add some boots. Because, you know, it's not safe for the body to be exposed to all that pressure. So even your feet need to get covered up. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Look at that. That one's a little bit longer than the other one. And you know what? That's okay. <laughs> Let's go and think about our gloves. So I'm going to go ahead and make some mitten hands. Mm-hmm. Curve going down. And then a little thumb. All right? Let's do the same on this side. We're going to go down. Curve it down. Now, while I'm drawing this line, my eyeball is actually going back and forth. I'm looking back and forth because I, I do want some symmetry here, right? They, they should be similar. They're not 100% perfect. So while I'm drawing this line, my eyeball is actually looking over here. It's going back and forth so that I can kind of match the same glove size as the other side. All right. Boom. There we go. We got our diver. So this is a good basic start. If you want to, you could do a little internet research on what exactly did the first scuba suit look like? What kind of details did they have? You could really go to town adding like all sorts of cool buckle and belt details. Um, you could check out and see what other, um, oh, actually, I think I might have a picture. Let me go see if I can find it. Okay, I couldn't find the pictures that I have printed out, but I've got my laptop open over here, and I'm looking at some old deep sea diver suits so that I can throw some other cool details on here. Um, one thing that I do notice is that it actually has like a little lamp on the top of the head. That's cool. So I am going to add a little curved line here. And then I'm going to make an oval at the top. I'm going to do two straight lines going down. And then boom. It's like a little light. Well, I probably should put like a little circle there. That's where the, the light's coming out. And then if I want to do, I can erase some of these other lines that I'm not going to need. Draw back the lines that I erase that I do need. Boom. <laughs> That's so funny. But it makes sense, you know? If you are deep sea diving, there is no light down there at a certain point, at a certain depth. So you're going to need to provide your own light. Okay, so that's one cool detail we can add, right? I do know that there are buckles and straps that connect between the sleeve and the gloves. And we also have those same kind of straps down here at the bottom um, where the boots connect. So I'm gonna draw some double lines here. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Um, yep. It, see, it took me a second to figure out. I'm like, wait, what am I drawing? <laughs> and then I'm gonna draw, um, I'm actually do some overlapping straps right here. Yeah, how about that? How about that? So we'll just go straight down and then up. Yeah, cool. What else can I add? All right, it looks like there is something. Oh, there are this actually sometimes was a whole get up. So the helmet is attached to this big metal piece that also sits on top of the suit itself. And uh, we can add some like rivet details. Rivets are metal bolts 
the attached pieces of metal together. That's a cool detail you can add. We can actually add some rivet detail up here, some bolts. Mm-hmm. Sometimes there would be a cage of some sort. You could always do that. But I think for now, you know what? I'm gonna keep it simple. I'm going with it. Because really, all right, yeah, it's fun to draw. And you can keep on adding more details if you want. But besides the contour drawing, we do have some other goals for this lesson. So it's not just about drawing a super fun scuba suit. It's also about using some contrast to make your sea diver pop off of the paper. Okay, so what we are going to need to do is think about our background. So for our background, we're going to be using warm and cool colors. Okay, so think about warm and cool colors. Here we've got our color wheel. So our color wheel, traditionally, is uh, we can look at a very simple one. A simple color wheel has our primary colors, red, yellow, blue, and in between our primary colors are the secondary colors. So we've got red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, also known as violet. So if you split the color wheel in half, on one half of our color wheel are all the warm colors. They're colors that are related because they all remind us of warm things like fire, lava, sunshine. And on the opposite, on the other half are all the cool colors. They're colors that remind us of cool things like uh, purple eggplants and cool blue water and the green grass that you can sit on in the shade at summertime. So you're going to use your warm and your cool colors for your background. So let's think. If we're deep sea diving, we are going to be probably surrounded by cool or warm colors. Mm hmm. Cool colors. So I'm going to go on a deep sea diving adventure into my bucket of crayons and I'm going to pick out all of the cool colors that I can find. So I'm going to find my purples, my greens, my blues, purple, greens, and blues. At home, you can use whatever kind of materials you have for adding color. You might have cool colored pens, you might have cool colored paint, you might have cool colored highlighters, whatever you got. If you've got a blue pen and a green highlighter and a purple paint, go for it. You can use all of those different types of materials in one piece of art. Uh, we, as artists, call that mixed media. And you can definitely turn this into a mixed media artwork. But remember, cool colors are what's going on in your background, okay? So what you can do with your cool colors is think. How are we going to add some wild waviness to our background? Well, if you wanted to, you could add a base color of cool with your blue or green or purple. And I have a couple of crayons that are, well, without wrappers. So that makes it really easy for me to use the side of the crayon to add color. But one thing I want you to notice is that if you are coloring and you're using the side of the crayon on a surface, you want to make sure that that surface doesn't have any texture or else it will get picked up. Unless you want that texture. Hmm. Let me see. I'll be right back. All right. So I found in, I'm here in the art room, so I found some really fancy tools. <laughs> they, they actually don't look that fancy, but they are fancy-ish. 
Um, these are called texture plates. And these are just plastic pieces that have a texture. This is a physical texture. I can feel the bumpiness to it. So these types of tools you put underneath your paper and then check it out when you rub your crayon over it. It picks up the texture of the plate. Now, I also found this big old piece of cardboard. It's uh, from a refrigerator, see? <laughs> uh, this actually also has some really cool texture. Um, so if you look at the lines, you can see the lines that run horizontal or if you hold it this way, vertical. I kind of want to do some horizontal lines. Let me see if I can pick this up. Mm, yeah, it doesn't really pick up the line texture too much. Oh, it sort of does down here. Maybe it just depends on how hard I press. So this is one way. I mean, you could grab a piece of cardboard and as you're rubbing your background color, your main color on, you could add a little texture I actually was uh, looking at the bottom of my shoe too, and I was like, hey, maybe I could use the bottom of my shoe for some texture. And uh, yeah, actually, you, you totally could do that also. Check that out. This is a little more awkward, like probably would be more beneficial to take your shoe off <laughs> and go ahead and then rub it. But you know, it's just an idea. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish uh, rubbing this background with my crayon. Uh, you can add color to your background however you want. If you want to, you can, um, you know, paint your background. Oh my gosh, that would probably look really beautiful. I see nothing wrong with that. Now, for you fourth grade artists, uh, this is going to actually take a little bit of self-control. Now you see how I'm using my side of my crayon and I'm trying to get up nice and close and I'm going a little bit slow and careful because I don't want to color into my awesome contour line drawing that I did. I'm also crisscrossing all the lines here, huh? That's okay. Oh, and look at me going ambidextrous, flipping it over to the left hand. Nice. Sometimes it's good to do that. Unless you're getting nice and careful, and then you gotta switch over to your more competent hand. My right hand is much better practiced than my left. That is for sure. And then, yeah, all of these weird little mini pieces that have to get colored in, you gotta be careful with that. All right, so now that I've got a good base layer cool color. What I'm going to do is I'm going to throw in some others and I'm actually going to, I'm going to get rid of my texture too. Haha, <laughs> bye texture. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to kind of make like some little wavy lines in the background using my other cool colors. And you can even add like a little spiral action if you want in there. You don't want it, I don't know, I guess you could do like a regular kind of pattern with it if you wanted to. But I kind of want to just make it look like the water is flowing around my deep sea diver. I'm going to throw in some green. You know, I don't want to be too hasty because I don't want to get like, you know, green all up in my deep sea diver suit. Maybe not yet. I don't know. We shall see. Do 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 do. Yeah. Got some green back there. And maybe I'll take some blue and I'll just throw in some darker blue lines. Again, it's not like a hundred percent perfect because well, it's the ocean that I'm trying to create an image of. And goodness knows, the ocean is not perfect. It is an organic thing. And we know organic things, they do whatever they want. Like those organic shapes that we learned about a couple of weeks ago. All right. Wow, look at that. Okay, now you may be wondering, hey, how are we going to be finishing our deep sea diver suit? Well, 
what we're going to actually do is continue to use our pencil. And what I'd like to do is actually play around with some value. Yes, we are diving into value. Um, traditionally, if we were in class doing this, I would break out the paints and we would learn about tints and shades. So we would do light and dark colors. So tints are when you take a color and you add white to it. When you take a color and you add white to it, you make a tint. It makes it light. Okay? So I would make a light blue if I mixed these two together. To make a shade, you would take a color and black. When you mix black with any color, you're going to make a shade of that color. It's a dark color. Sort of like window shades make rooms darker. Well, color shades are darker. And white makes things light. Mm -hmm. So we've got tints and shades. Well, we can, um, we can create value, light and dark colors, by mixing our colors with paint, but we can also create value just with a simple tool like a pencil. And this is where it gets fun. So if you want to think about what might be the darkest part of your deep sea diver suit, well, maybe all of the buckles and the belts and the, the metal details there. So we can start using our pencil and we're gonna color this in nice and dark. All right, this will be a shade. This is going to be dark. And this will be the darkest value that we have, okay? And the thing about pencils, yeah, and we'll, we'll play around with this a little bit. Pencil is um, made of not lead, but graphite, and graphite is a very soft material. You can actually, you can see it on my finger there. It's a soft enough material that um, you can actually blend it. So if you take a look, I, I colored in nice and solid here, and then if you take your finger and you just brush over what we just colored with the graphite, you'll see that it kind of makes the color, the darkness there, spread out. And we create a gradient where it goes from dark, medium, light. Dark, medium, light. And we can darken this even more by drawing back on top of it. All right? Now we can add some darkness to our belt. We'll go ahead and color this nice and dark. Nice and dark. Oh, wait, let's finish this buckle. Old school, like a pirate buckle. Let's see, we'll add a little detail there. There, okay, so I'll color that in. And I'll color this in. I'll color this part of the belt in. So the goal here is to lay down a lot of graphite, right? A lot of graphite. And I don't know if you, I'm not actually telling you what I'm doing right here, but if you noticed, I colored one way with my pencil. I made my lines going vertical, and then I turned and I colored them horizontal. That's a little trick. I didn't actually tell you about it, but if you're watching, you can see it. I'm going to take my finger and I'm going to just smudge that graphite up and down. Mm -hmm. There we go. And we can make it a little darker by coloring back over it. Well, let's get those little details on the top too. Why not? So, there's a little bit of extra value thrown in there. Uh, oh, definitely, definitely down here in the boots. I'm going to make this dark. 
I'm gonna leave my straps light, but definitely the boots I'm gonna go ahead and add a layer of graphite to. You might have to get your pencil sharpeners out for this one because the more you use it, the more it disappears, right? The graphite that is. And yes, you probably will need to stop and sharpen your pencil at some point. And that's okay. And then we can blend. We can blend and blend and pull some of that gray graphite up into the leg. There you go. So we're getting sort of a nice little, um, it's a soft, quiet effect of using our pencils to create some value. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and push pause on my video here. I'm gonna finish adding some more value and then I'll bring you back to show you what else I've got going on. All right, kitty cats, so here we are. I've gone ahead and I've added some more value to um, my helmet. I colored in with my pencil and then I did a little smudge action, you know, and I just got a, a good general overall, like there's a little bit of value all over this thing, but it can be a little spotty and I wanna be a little bit more um, intentful. Like I wanna use this value with purpose. So I'm gonna create a little shadow underneath here. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna lay down a little bit of pencil, a little bit of pencil line right here almost like I'm just making a thick outline. And then I'm gonna use my finger and I'm gonna blend it out a little bit. Okay, soften it up a little. And then what I can do is try to press a little bit lighter. You see when you press a little lighter, what happens is you get a lighter value. Yeah, I'm not pressing with the same firm hardness. So I'm just kind of pressing gently, ever, ever so gently. And that creates a little bit lighter value. And then I can kind of use my finger and smudge that a little bit to make it look a little bit more smooth. Because ideally, what you want to get, and I'm going to give him, yeah, a little bit of more value on the shoulder here. That looks nice. So I'm going to add a little bit of pencil just a little bit of value and just smudge as I go. Yeah. Um, I think there should be a little more value under here, almost like a little shadow on the belt. So I'll add a little bit, just, just ever so gently, ever so gently, adding some more value, blend it down. Maybe go this way too. Blend it down ever so gently. And then blend it down. This is gonna be a really fun exercise for you boys and girls to practice your um, pencil control, you know, with how, how hard are you pressing? Don't press hard. At least not when you're doing like the little details. When you're going hard and dark, go for it. Um, let's see, I think maybe the gloves, maybe these mittens need a little more value. So I'm just gonna go ahead and throw some more on there. Mm -hmm. Maybe right here, the inside of the thumb. It's kind of fun. You could also try um, smudging with a Q-tip. Mm -hmm. If you use a Q-tip instead of your finger um, or a piece of paper towel, and uh, someday when you grow up and go to art school, you can use these really fancy things. They're rolled up pieces of paper and they're called stumps. Yes, a stump, super cool tool. All right, I, you know what? Maybe I'll add a, little, add a little armpit value. You know, all the nooks and crannies of our bodies usually have shadows and value, right? Let's add a little armpit value. Why not? Yeah. Probably should add some value inside that face mask too. I don't know. All right, I think this has gone on long enough. 
you feel free artists to go ahead and add where, whatever value you deem suitable for your deep sea diver. And hey, I know we only use the cool colors for the, the background here, but if you want to, you could always throw in some hot colors and uh, throw in some jellies or something or some other fishies of another variety if you so desire. Because, you know, what is your diver going to see when he's down there? I don't know. You show me. <laughs> All right. Enjoy your value-filled, cool-colored, deep-seat diver. I said seat. I meant to say sea. Deep-sea diver. All right, kitty cats. I'll see you later. Bye.